Blending sketch comedy, musical numbers, and dance routines, The Tracy Allman Show is a variety series which aired weekly from April 1987 to May 1990. The show was conceived and co-created by veteran television producer James L. Brooks as a means to highlight the titular star of the show and her multifaceted talents. However, the series instead became famous for being that show that The Simpsons started on. Originally, The Simpsons were only supposed to be a brief wraparound as The Allman Show transitioned in and out of commercials, though the shorts were eventually given their own segment on the series. Ultimately, The Simpsons shorts proved significantly more popular than The Allman Show itself. And, while The Simpsons went on to become a cultural phenomenon shaping television history, The Allman Show drifted into obscurity becoming just a footnote in the history of The Simpsons. Understandably, given the unusual circumstances of having her own show upstaged by what was effectively filler, Allman has always had an unusual relationship with The Simpsons. Predictably, as it became clearer and clearer that a significant portion of people, if not the vast majority of them, were tuning into her show to watch the shorts, Ullman was jealous and even bitter about the success of The Simpsons which he felt was at her expense. Eat my shorts. Publicly, Ullman appeared fine with the attention that The Simpsons received. However, behind closed doors, members of Ullman's staff were well aware of how exactly she felt about the shorts and her attempts to undermine the cartoon's success. Then, after The Simpsons became a sitcom, right when the show was at the height of its popularity in the early 90s, things between Allman and The Simpsons turned ugly, when Allman took legal action against the show over intellectual properties for cartoon characters that she had no creative involvement with, and, as it would be revealed years later, actually hated. In addition to her talents as a comedic actor, Ullman is also an accomplished singer, dancer, screenwriter, and author. Sadly, many of her talents are the result of tragedy in her youth. After witnessing her father die of a heart attack in front of her when she was just six years old, her family struggled financially to survive without him. And it was Ullman's attempts to cheer up her remaining family members despite their circumstances that led to her honing her skills as a multifaceted entertainer. Prior to establishing herself as predominantly a comedic actor, Ullman had a brief but relatively successful music career that saw her have six hit songs in the UK in the space of just two years, with her 1983 album You Broke My Heart in 17 Places and the 1984 release You Caught Me Out. In between her music career, Ullman appeared in a number of British television productions, most notably the sketch show Three of a Kind, which ran from July 1981 to October 1983, made up of three seasons consisting of 16 episodes and one special. She also starred in another sketch comedy show, A Kick Up the 80s, which ran from September 1981 to January 1984, made up of two seasons consisting of 10 episodes. After winning a BAFTA in 1984 for her work on Three of a Kind, Omen moved to Los Angeles in 1985. Initially, she focused on a film and stage career, believing that there was little opportunity in television. Still, her agent put together a compilation of her work and began circulating it around Hollywood for either film or television opportunities. As expected, she got some interest from networks eager to produce a sitcom based on her comedy. However, after the tape caught the attention of Brooks, he immediately saw the potential to center a sketch comedy around Allman's talents. In April 1987, The Tracy Allman Show premiered, quickly garnering critical and commercial success. Ultimately, the show was the first Fox Network primetime show to win an Emmy and would go on and receive 10 of the awards all up, with Allman herself winning three as her show established her as one of the most versatile talents in the industry in addition to leading to the phenomenal success of The Simpsons. After being born and raised in Portland, Matt Groening moved to Los Angeles in 1977 at the age of 23 with the intentions of becoming a writer. Instead, he drifted through a series of dead-end jobs, including bussing tables, working at a nursing home, and chauffeuring. <coughs> the closest he got to fulfilling his dream of writing involved a few jobs of thankless ghostwriting. During his early years in Los Angeles, Groening created the comic Life in Hell as a way to vent his frustrations. He soon found a small but loyal audience, as he detailed the struggles and misadventures of the anthropomorphic rabbits Binky, Sheba, and Bongo, and the identical roommates Akbar and Jeff. Much like The Simpsons, Life in Hell covered a variety of subjects, including love, work, and death, while exploring themes of angst, social alienation, and self-loathing. At its peak, Life in Hell was published in 250 newspapers. Eventually, the comic caught the attention of Brooks. In 1985, Brooks contacted Groening about adapting Life in Hell for animated sequences for Allman's upcoming show. Fearing that he'd lose the ownership rights to Life in Hell, Groening created these iconic family leading to The Simpsons shorts and, subsequently, the awkward working relationship with Allman. 
I suppose when you talk to people and they, you know, they talk about the show, I expect they say, oh, I really enjoyed Tracy Allman's work. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All up, there were 48 installments of The Simpsons shorts produced, which aired during the first three seasons of The Allman Show. The vast majority were written by Graining alone, while the animation was done at the studio Klasky Supo by a team consisting of David Silverman, Bill Kopp, and Wes Archer, though the latest seasons were animated by just Silverman and Archer. All the current-day voice actors of the titular family were involved in the shorts right from the start. Unlike the current incarnation of the series, the characters were crudely drawn and animated. This is because Graining's original rough designs were just traced over by Klasky Supo employees, rather than redrawn to look more professional, as Graining had expected. While the animation process had such a strict deadline for each installment that the shorts were produced as quickly as possible, allowing for little time to clean up the movements. The first short, Good Night, aired in April 1987, and the animation was an immediate hit. Soon, the shorts were given their own segment on the show, before being developed into a primetime spin-off sitcom which began in December 1989 with the Christmas special, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, which details how the family got their dog, Santa's Little Helper. Like the shorts, the sitcom was an immediate hit, with only the merchandise sales for the show being more successful than the series itself. Shortly after the Simpsons Christmas special aired, Allman's show came to an end in May 1990. Officially, Ullman made the decision to end the series, though it was the Fox Network's reluctance to renew it for another season that led to her pulling the plug herself. Now, with Ullman out of work, while The Simpsons thrived, thanks to the network that effectively cancelled her show, rumors began to circulate that Ullman was bitter over the cartoon's success, something she herself made light of in an attempt to dismiss the claims. But I'm not bitter. <laughs> Bart Simpson makes more money than me. What can he buy? He's a cartoon, isn't he? In addition to Allman's joke about not being bitter at The Simpsons' success, doing nothing to quash the speculation, there was also the fact that it was strange that someone who was so good at impressions like Allman had never appeared on The Simpsons. The inimitable Julie Kempner. Given that Graining was a fan of Allman, he'd always wanted her to appear on his cartoon. However, during the run of the shorts, Allman had always claimed that she'd been too busy to appear in the series. Later, after her own show was over with, Graining again asked Allman to appear on his. This time she agreed, and for the 16th episode of the second season, Bart's dog gets an F, Allman finally joined the Simpsons universe. In the episode, Santa's little helper goes to an obedience school after he repeatedly misbehaves. The business is run by Emily Winthrop, who is voiced by Allman. Additionally, The Simpsons' neighbor, Sylvia Winfield, is also voiced by the actress. The episode first aired in March 1991 and seemed to lay rest to all the rumors that Allman resented The Simpsons. Then, just a month later, Allman sued the Fox network for millions, as she demanded a slice of the fortune that The Simpsons' merchandise had generated that she felt she was entitled to. I'm old! Gimme, gimme, gimme! Allman's lawsuit against Fox alleged four counts of breach of contract. The complaint argued that her deal with Brooks' production company, Gracie Films, entitled her to 5-10% to of merchandise profits from products or programs based on spin-offs from her show, even if the characters in question were created by someone else. She was particularly interested in what she saw as her share of Simpsons merchandise, as it was, and still is, a huge part of the show's success. At the time, Allman had already received $58,000 from Fox in relation to royalties for The Simpsons while they were on her show. However, Ullman was seeking at least two and a half million of the tens of millions of dollars that Fox had made from The Simpsons merchandise, even though Fox insisted that she had no right to that revenue stream. Understandably, both sides accused the other of greed and ingratitude. The whole case hinged on a 12-page contract Ullman signed in February 1987, just hours before filming the first episode of her series. Fox contended that Ullman was a hired performer with limited creative control over her show, which made it highly implausible that Fox would have ever given her merchandising rights to spin-offs, as no one, let alone a newcomer, would get a deal like that when they were, basically, just performing as an actress on a series, even if that show happened to be named after them. Throughout the trial, Ullman portrayed herself as someone who was involved in every aspect of her show, including The Simpsons shorts, though she failed to specify exactly what she had done, or explain how it was that she was too busy to do voiceover for a single one of the three-minute segments, but somehow not too busy that she couldn't make a significant creative contribution to the shorts in some other capacity. I work hard for the money! Ullman also claimed that she'd even defended The Simpsons when Brooks was considering ending them because they had gotten too dark with their subject matter and humor. Steady, boys. Easy there. Understandably, the lawsuit was well and truly the end of Allman and Fox's working relationship, but she was careful not to mention Brooks in her lawsuit, even though his company was instrumental in negotiating the disputed contract. 
However, although Omen was careful not to directly attack Brooks or his company in order to avoid damaging her working relationship with him, Brooks was a key witness in the trial, and he didn't help Omen's case. Rather, Brooks sided with Fox, arguing that The Simpsons was created by Groening with no creative input at all from Omen. Check mate. Later, in October 1992, a Superior Court jury sided with Fox. Omen was unavailable at the time, but responded through her lawyer. Understandably, Omen's lawsuit was the end of her working relationship with Fox. And, despite her efforts to avoid antagonizing Brooks, the case also saw the end of her professional relationship with the legendary producer. The character Winthrop appeared in a number of other episodes, including Old Money, the 17th episode of the second season, when Grandpa Simpson inherits a large sum of money, and when Flanders failed, the third episode of the third season, in which Homer wishes for Flanders' new left-handed store to go out of business. <laughs> However, Winthrop has no lines in either episode, and this is because as of November 2022, Bart's Dog Gets an F is the one and only time Omen has ever appeared in The Simpsons. While the character of Winfield has appeared in a number of episodes since Bart's Dog Gets an F, she's now voiced by Maggie Roswell. Officially, the last project Omen and Brooks were involved in together was the movie I'll Do Anything, which was written and directed by Brooks. The feature was released in February 1994 and stars Nick Nolte as a struggling actor who finds himself the sole caretaker of his six-year-old daughter. The film co-stars Omen, which, despite having just a minor role, would have been awkward to film. Because, although the movie was released in 1994, it was in production during Omen's lawsuit which led Brooks to having to take time out from the project to record his testimony for his contribution to the trial. Omen has since found success with a number of other networks, most notably at HBO with the series Tracy Takes On, which ran between January 1996 to March 1999, consisting of 65 episodes over four seasons, and the series Tracy Omen's State of the Union at Showtime, which aired from March 2008 to March 2010, made up of 19 episodes over three seasons. Ultimately, Omen's fallout with Fox and Brooks didn't really impact her career negatively. Still, rather than consider herself lucky, she has referenced The Simpsons numerous times over the years and repeatedly suggested, if not outright stated, that she deserves credit for the show's success. You, you brought us The Simpsons. Yeah, I did. Your she has also claimed to love the series, despite the bitter lawsuit and the various reports for animosity towards The Simpsons. Then, in April 2013, Conan O'Brien, a former writer for The Simpsons himself, assembled four of the show's other writers for his talk show, Serious Jibber Jabber. The panel consisted of Al Jean, Mike Reese, Ray Kogan, and Jeff Martin. During the conversation, the group covered a number of subjects. Inevitably, Almond's name came up regarding her involvement with the shorts. Initially, Jean explained that Almond was too busy to have anything to do with the cartoons, before Kogan, who had also written for The Almond Show in addition to The Simpsons, corrected him, explaining that, quite simply, she hated the animated shorts. I'm okay. she, hated, she hated the cartoons? Oh, yes. She wanted it off the show because she said, I, I, I breastfed these babies. She had nothing to do with it and ac actively tried to get it, get it off the show. Three years later, in January 2016, Ullman appeared on The Graham Norton Show, during which the host inevitably mentioned The Simpsons and how they began on Ullman's show. Strangely, despite Kogan's earliest statement about Ullman hating the shorts, she doubled down her original claim that she had nurtured the animations while insisting that she would have voiced a character had she not been too busy. Your very first show in America was the one that spawned The Simpsons. Yes, The Simpsons started on my show. And, well, yes. Yeah. Additionally, in the years since, Almond has repeatedly joked that she wished The Simpsons would let her on their show, ostensibly implying that they were actively sabotaging her career after she had helped kickstart theirs. I wish I could get three minutes in the middle of that show. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, there's no doubt that Almond was and still is phenomenally talented, particularly when it comes to impressions, and that she deserved more credit for how good her show actually was. And for a show that consists of 81 episodes, made up 270 segments and one special over four seasons, it's understandable that Almond would be upset that her own personal series is remembered for something she had nothing to do with. But that's just the reality of the situation, regardless of how she feels. And it speaks volumes that, despite her claims, she can provide a shred of evidence that she, in any way, let alone a meaningful way, contributed in the slightest to the success of The Simpsons, even if she truly feels otherwise. You didn't do anything! Didn't I? Originally, The Simpsons were just one of a number of reoccurring sketches on The Tracy Allman Show. Then, Allman's series became known as that show that The Simpsons shorts were on. 
And for someone as multi-talented as Ullman, it's understandable that she'd be bitter and frustrated that her skills were overlooked by crudely drawn, minimally animated cartoons. It's understandable that she saw the shorts as a threat, but it's inexcusable that she ever tried to sabotage another artist's career out of nothing more than jealousy. And it just adds insult to injury that she now tries to take credit for the success of The Simpsons. To argue that she somehow imbued with success each and every minutes-long animated sequence that just happened to be on a show named after her that she otherwise had nothing to do with is both absurd and insulting to the numerous other people who went uncredited but were directly involved in the development of what would, ultimately, become the iconic series, The Simpsons. Look, are you a creator of The Simpsons? I breastfed the yellow people. <laughs> <laughs> what a load of crappy crap crap. Eat my shorts.